Hi, my name is Matt zoller Seitz, and I'm an editor-at-large and a critic for RogerEbert.com and a staff writer for New York Magazine and Vulture. And I'm here to introduce a discussion between Reed Harkness, the director of Sam Now, and Sam Harkness, the principal subject of the movie, and Jason Reed, a producer and editor. And before we do that, let's watch a trailer for the film. This is my half-brother, Sam. I've been filming him since he was 11. Oh my God! Oh, Joyce! This is his mom. I felt so special around her. Joyce is here and Sam. She would dance to music with me on her shoulders. When he was 14, she vanished without telling anyone. Did she say goodbye? Or... No, she didn't say goodbye that time. At age 17, Sam and I take a road trip to find her. I want her to know that I'm not mad at her. She is wanted. What happens if Sam has to hear that his mom doesn't want to see him? So when we set out to find your mom, did you get what you wanted? You have set in motion a journey that will circle around and circle around in your life. Now I have to start leaning into that discomfort or I'm going to be like emotionally stunted my whole life. I just kept asking, do you really want to do this, Sam? In everyone's youth, there's at least one pivotal something. It haunts us, but it can make us stronger. Things will not be the same after you do this. Sam will be different. So are you ready to talk about your mom? <laughs> so Reed, I wanted to start by just asking you about the filmmaking, about you as a filmmaker, and also about the kind of the, the timeline relationship between the development of your talent and when you started shooting members of your family and and uh, and when it became nonfiction. This is a project that was at least 25 years in the making. Um, I started when I was a teenager. Um, I was filming my brother over here, Sam, um, when he was a little kid. And that evolved over time to become a, a much more in-depth project. I also want to introduce um, Jason Reed, who is our producer and one of our editors um, and has been instrumental on the making of the movie since 2015. And Jason, what's your, and tell, tell me your relationship to, uh, to Sam and Reed. So I actually grew up in North Seattle around the corner from Reed and Sam and Reed and I met, I think when we were, you know, five years old or something. And uh, yeah, I kind of had a front row view of the Harkness family. I knew Randy and Joyce and Grandma Doris and Jared and Sam and Reed and Peter. And we grew up like playing around the neighborhood. And Reed and I kind of got disconnected in our early adult lives. And we both separately became filmmakers. And so uh, I knew Reed and his work. And I was really enthusiastic as, as an editor, especially to be able to like um, get my hands on the beautiful Super 8 16 millimeter footage and all the stuff each other for 25 years. So that's kind of my connection to the family. Now, Reed, when, you know, t tell me, uh, kind of give me a little more detail beyond what was in the movie about your, your own development as a filmmaker and your, and your use of Sam as uh, basically your kind of your go-to leading man. He was like your backyard Robert De Niro, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and uh, I'm just so fascinated by how much of a constant thing this was in your life that it was you know it, it looks from the movie like this was a thing that was a regular thing that you did it wasn't an occasional thing yeah so i wanted to be a filmmaker um from a very young age um playing with vhs cameras and any kind of camera was like one of my favorite favorite games almost you know and then and then as i evolved as i got a little older and i 
started to see um films like like dead man was a big one that really inspired me um independent films you know gosh i saw so many films that just like i was like okay i think i can start to get into this but i didn't feel like i had the means to to go to film school or anything so i found a super 8 camera in our dad's garage and i decided that i was going to try to make my first film and that first film was called sam one and it was just a little study of sam and wrestling with the experience of being locked out of of our house and um you know so loosely scripted more or less experimental super 8 film that i hand developed in an old army issue morse g3 developing tank and uh in my dad's garage <laughs> um and it's a it was something that showed me that um showed me a lot of things but the first thing was i made a huge mistake and i the the developing went all wrong and it looked like um it just that you could look at the film you could see through parts of it and parts of it had you know black areas and chemical stains and um and i i realized that i had ruined it but um when I put it on the projector along with this 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 film club that I was a part of at the time, um, I couldn't look at the screen, but everyone else was staring in awe at this flickering light. And I look up to see um, my 11 year old brother's slow motion face, slow motion, just like um, he's moving in slow motion, but all of these like chemical stains and um, solarization and artifacting are happening over that i i realized like how amazing like mistakes can be and i mm. leaned into just make pushing forward and making more films and we made sam two through five um each one is sort of a little study of um stages of kind of boyhood growth And when did you switch to 16 millimeter? We brought in 16 millimeter for the Blue Panther. The Blue Panther sequences were all shot super 16 um, with my friend, Nick Peterson. Um, it was about um, two years after our road trip um, to look for Joyce. And tell me about the, you know, just the impact of of your mother's disappearance at first it was just a disappearance wasn't it like she didn't she didn't give anybody a heads up yeah my stepmom Joyce um really left our family out of the blue from what I could see um uh my brothers my half brothers Sam here and Jared we're really left in the dark as to like where she was going, why she was going. And um, that sh sent shockwaves through our family and, you know, hit me really hard. So, I, I mean, and this is something Sam can speak to since he's here, you know. Sam, do you want to speak to that? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a, a complete mystery to me and, and my brother, Jared. Uh, we had been splitting time between my dad's house and my, my mom's house in Seattle. Um, she moved in with my stepdad. Um, and when she left, we continued to go to our stepdad's house, you know, on, on our planned every other weekend and, and I don't know, every Thursday or something like that. Uh, and we would ask my stepdad, you know, hey, have you heard anything from mom? And then he would ask us the same question back. Um, mm. And that was the kind of indication that like the parents don't have a grasp of what's going on right now and like don't they know as much as we know and there's, there's not a lot of conversation happening about it and how many years have you been making films together when this happened at 14 um sam sam was just about to go into freshman year of high school when she left and so so that would be like three or four years of us making the sam films um but we can carried on making them while she was gone so we were still doing this filmmaking and it was this this like i think of it like we developed a language 
that that involved you know acting that involved creativity and it also involved um going on adventures like we would just like drive and drive and get to some park or you know or beach or something and and film and it was maybe maybe it was more about that than the actual filmmaking i'm not sure right going somewhere and doing something together Hard to say, you know, <laughs> I was only showing these to those very small audiences, but I loved doing it. It's so interesting to me how, you know, when something like this happens, it's traumatic no matter who you are. But I feel like creative people have one advantage over everybody else, which is they have a way to process this, even if they're not aware that that's what they're doing. And I and I had this very strong image of 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 you all making these films and this this horrible thing was going on in the background, this kind of absence of knowledge, you know, like when you don't when you don't have answers, it can be just as bad as a bad answer. And I wonder what that felt like to you as you're as you're making these films as you're making these basically home movies you know there there there's more planning and more thought put into them than the typical home movie but they're they're not you know it's not like you're going to go show them at the AMC right mm -hmm. these are personal projects and this and this uh this catastrophic event has occurred yeah absolutely for me i was like I was making all these films that were creative expressions of of ideas that can occur in adolescence. And some of the themes are like about smaller traumas and things that, you know, like just like how it how hard it is to be a boy growing up in this world. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, so I'm working with some of those ideas and, uh, you know, I'm expressing this stuff. <clears throat> And we get to a point where, um, you know, we uh, Sam was always like included in the conversation about the, what the next movie would be, and we'd like have a we always have a phone call and be like, okay, what are we gonna do next? And he's like, let's do something about pirates. And so I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna work in pirates to this next thing, and then I'd start like storyboarding out like you know Sam in a pirate costume, and, you know, and, like we just we just play play with that and. Um, yeah, we just kind of riff on the ideas that we have, you know, partially influenced by where Sam was at, and then heavily influenced by my reflections on my what I had just gone through to get to, you know, be the team that I was. And then um, we get to this point where we're we're up on this mountain hiking, and Sam, Sam's suggesting ideas for Sam Six. <laughs> Sam Six is going to be about like this character that he calls the Blue Panther, which is just Sam wearing a uh, Mexican wrestling mask and a and a wetsuit that's too small for him. And he's going to battle like twin robots and this and that. And and that's where it bubbles up for me. And in the moment, I recognize that okay, um, what about what about what about Joyce? What about what about the Blue Panther finds his mom? And it just basically said something like that. And and that um, when I said it, I realized that like there's this huge taboo in our family. We don't talk about this because because it's gonna re-traumatize Sam and Jared, or because like you know this is something a skeleton that we keep deeply hidden in our closet. And um, and it had really gone on too long. It had been three years at this point, and. I'd been looking for a way to connect with Sam over it. Somehow the idea of bringing this up as a film kind of worked. It kind of worked for us. And and Sam, the best memory I have of this is just that he said, yeah, to it. And he, he wanted to do it. I called him later. That's recorded. And he's just like, yeah, I want to do it. Let's go. And, you know, so we lean into our adventure. We lean into our filmmaking and we, we, go on this road trip to to look for a missing mom so jason where are you in all of this like like, like fill me in on i'm trying to understand the relationships you know at a at a filmmaking level yeah well i was just a, a kid in the neighborhood i wasn't really involved in the filmmaking at that point i got into filmmaking more uh after college in my early 20s and so 
right around the time when this was all happening was when Reed and I got a little bit disconnected. And so uh, I got reconnected with Reed after they had found Joyce and Reed did a big screening with the Tiny Picture Club, his kind of Super 8 collective down in Portland where they showed all the Sam films consecutively with live music score. And they showed huh. a little teaser for Sam now, and this is in 2005. Um, and, and that's when, you know, I'd been to the tiny picture club screenings. They do them in Seattle and Portland. And I like love the aesthetic of super eight. And I was just getting into filmmaking at that time. So I had started doing my own super eight shooting and, and learning how to edit digitally. And so a decade went by where Reed and I remained in touch and I'd finish a documentary and show it down in Portland and be like, Reed, when you're ready to, you know, pick up Sam now, like, I'd love to, to be a part of it and, uh, produce and edit and, Finally, in 2015, we got together for breakfast and it was kind of right around the time that Reed was thinking about picking things back up with Sam as things had changed in Sam's outlook on thing. And we just agreed to partner with it. Um, and yeah, it took another four years for us to raise the money and come up with our co-production with ITVS, which led to the independent lens premiere. But uh, yeah, so I was kind of just tangentially there paying attention to what Reed was doing, but not necessarily involved in the filmmaking, but Reed and I played with toys and, and, you know, played a bunch of games in the neighborhood growing up, but he was, the, it was more of the Harkness family thing doing these films. Now, was, I, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, it was really important to me to bring in collaborators that um, knew me, knew my family and had a, a connection to, you know, this place that we come from. Um, it, uh, it's, it was so important to me to represent nuance and, um, you know, the, the truth of where we come from. And I knew that, uh, you know, with such a massive um, archive of source material, um, I needed collaborators that could see not just like where I'm coming from now with telling a story, but where I was then mm -hmm. so that we could really use those layers to to amplify this um this family story was there was yeah. there a moment when you realized that you wanted this to be an actual movie that people would see like people who didn't know any of you personally yeah i think that 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 process began that realization began really when i'm in that living room at my grandma's house and i'm starting to recognize that the adults might not have all the answers and I have to stand up and start to express what's going on and I'm kind of flailing to help them get a window into what we're going through and uh and then from that point on I start to um re-own this this story for me because it becomes a, an experience that I'm going through I think before then I felt like I was just like, hey, you know, this is kind of like a joke. The Blue Panther finds his mom. Yeah, sure. I'll do that with you. But really, the objective is I'll, I'll go along on this trip with you and we'll have this sort of the Blue Panther finds his mom will be just a tool that we use to kind of open up doors. Um, but right. I re re-own the story. Uh, I, 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 I bring it back to my own ownership at the, this point when I start having all of these questions like, why is my family so avoidant? Why is Sam so like disconnected from his emotions? Why, why is Joyce so okay with what she did? You know, um, all those things are my questions that I, I, the itches that I needed to scratch basically. Well, it's fascinating to me just as, you know, somebody who's been watching and writing about television and movies for a very long time to see these basically like kids or or barely adults embarking on this thing that like it's a television news piece practically mm -hmm. i mean you're like you're walking up to people's houses and knocking on their doors and hoping that they'll open the door and talk to you which is the most basic kind of of journalism that there is and and this is this is what reporters do it's what reporters do and and you know that, you know, I, I'm wondering like what's going through your mind as you're doing this because I, as many literally decades as I've been doing this, I still feel a little bit of a panic attack when I've got a cold call somebody that I'm hoping to get information from and they probably don't want to give it to me. 
you know, and you've never done anything like this before. I'm, I'm willing to bet. Where did you learn to do it? How did you get the nerve? And I want to hear from all of you on this, because this is the most incredible part of it to me. Mm. It's not the existence. It's not the story itself. It's the fact that you started working on it as a movie when you're mm. what, in your early 20s, late teens? What's the range yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, late teens is when I start. I'm making the sort of the series of Sam films. Early 20s is when the road trip uh and the the interviews start happening um well you're and what you're all my point is you're all very you're all very young to be doing a project of this heaviness this is heavy this story <laughs> this is like you know i i'm in my 50s and i'm only now getting up the nerve to talk about some of the types of things that you all made a movie about in your 20s appreciate that. I think, you know, we couldn't have done it without our bonding over the playful aspects of filmmaking. You know, like we had to incorporate the the fun aspect of the adventure. We're going on a road trip. We're not going on a you know, a personal quest to find mom. It's a it's a road trip. It's we're making a movie. We're we're doing this as a creative project. Um we had armor, we had protection, you know, also the part that you bring up of like that sort of reporter drive to go knock on doors. That was something strange that I developed um, as a teenager because I really wrestled in high school and like just was really frustrated by um, my own education. And I just could not, I could not, um, I didn't feel like I could like reach out and like grab things in the way that I wanted to. <laughs> And I started to do that um, when I had the impulse to and drive to try to be a filmmaker. I would just call filmmakers in Seattle and say, like, hey, I want to do this. I, I'm really interested in in film. Can I come, like, hang out with you and and help out in some way? I started to do that in this in this scenario. Um, basically. Sam had gone along on all these adventures, all of this filming, all these, you know, we make, made all these Sam movies together. He had been my actor for all this time already. And I felt like, um, you know, I was, a, I was a very protective brother for one thing. And then I'm also feeling like, you know what? Sam has given me so much. I, I, I should, uh, I should really try to give back. Yeah. So that the way that that came out was through, hey, I'm just going to go really hard into um, trying to get as many clues to to where Joyce could be. And then and then on top of that, it's like, yeah, I'm going to go on this road trip. And, you know, like maybe we won't find anything, but at least we will have tried. It's an extraordinary story, and I can see, you know, even now how much it affected you, how much it took out of you. And, and you know, and Sam, too, it's like, you know, I have a little brother, you know, he's in his, he's in his uh, 50s now, like me, but he'll always be my little brother. And I can't imagine him being that age and going through something like what you went through. I mean, was it did you ever think this is not a usual childhood activity you know or adolescent activity to to you know this is an epic this is like a, a, you know homer would have written an epic poem about this mm. thousands of years ago this is not what kids are normally doing well we I, felt normal to me but uh i don't know sam what do you think yeah i think i think Earlier, when we were filming a lot of this stuff, even 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 the trip to find my mom, there's like a uniqueness to it that I think I really enjoyed to be like, I I liked being different from a lot of my friends and that like, yeah, me and my brother make films and we do all these fun adventures. Um, and only, only later did I realize like, not only was it, it was unique, but also pretty bizarre and like pretty um, out there. Uh, 
I kind of just like used it as more of like an identity to feel different. And then later kind of realized it was like, it's not just different. This was a pretty wacky, bizarre adventure we did. <laughs> Have you ever done any acting outside of the stuff you've done with Reed? No, not at all. <laughs> you ever thought about it? Uh, not really. I think like I, I enjoyed the small community of like, like the tiny picture club mentioned earlier was uh, sort of like what I, what I liked the amount of tension I could handle, I think too. They're pretty amazing. I mean, all of the home movies, I mean, I wish, I, I don't know if you're ever going to do a DVD or something, but you know, I almost wish that I could just watch all the movies, mm. you know, like every, every frame of them, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think in our, you know, we're all a little tired from the making and getting the film outs of the world, but the Sam films, if you were to watch them straight through are incredible. And that was one of the hardest parts about the edit was figuring out what moments from these films that were literally like gold the whole way through to be used. And as they went on, they got longer and longer. So Sam Five's like an epic 20 minute or something. I don't know, Reed, right? 15, 20 minutes, the pirate one. And we only got to use, you know, I don't know, 30 seconds of Sam five. And so, and they stand alone really well. So, I mean, I think there's a hope that we could do that uh, in the future, but I'm not sure when we'll find the bandwidth to do it. What do you think? It's Ernie? really interesting too, because I would imagine that with something like that, I mean, you know what I, what I thought of is, have any of you guys heard of a, guy, a filmmaker named Stan Brackage? For sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, this movie made me think of him a lot. It made me think of him a lot. And and the way that he kind of just didn't recognize the he didn't seem to have the kind of anxiety that almost every other filmmaker has about budget and production value and things. He's like, I'm doing an epic about the evolution of the entire human species and I'm shooting it in my backyard and I'm playing every part. And that was it. And that was it, you know? And and there was something about the sort of the intensity of commitment in those films that that you can sort of see the story that's being told, but you can also see the people who are making it. You kind of get a sense of who they are, you know, and I think all of that came through. And also it's an interesting document of just the changing city that you're in, you know, probably right. places that you shot are different. Now, some of them may be gone. Mm. You know, yeah, there's yeah. a shot with Sam bicycle and you see the kingdom, the kingdom was blown up and we have two new stadiums in its place. And that's like, you know, it's like cool to see that. And it's funny, as I was going through the footage, it's like, oh my God, this is, uh, you know, the Northgate Elementary School right by our house. Cause I grew up in the same neighborhood. And that was the benefit, like Reed was talking about me being close to the story. I didn't ask him, is that, you know, is that Aunt Cindy? I knew it was Aunt Cindy cause I knew her. So in terms of going through the footage for the first time, I knew the place, I knew the people. And I think if someone was just coming in cold, like an editor, I think it would be hard to have that connection that I had that was deeply personal. Did any of the interviews that you did read with family members and close friends of the family? Uh, I'm sort of curious about the whole process of getting those. Like, did you just go over to people's, did you call them up and say, hey, can you spare an hour or two for you to, to talk about, about Joy and Sam? And, they, and did they say yes? And did you just go over there and set up the camera? And would, did anybody <laughs> say no to you? Uh, just give me a sense of kind of the larger process of that. You basically described it. Um, yes, I would. Oh, there was one weekend that was so rough. It was like, I, um, I, I actually, I was living in Portland and uh, like in, in 1999, I moved to, to Portland, Oregon. And, um, so I had almost a time-lapse view on what was going on with, um, Joyce being gone. It was like, I would check in, like, I would go up there, like, you know, like once or twice a month and we'd, you know, we'd, we'd have these connections and still no words, still she's not back. Um, so when I get to this place of, uh, you know, doing these interviews, um, I kind of, um, <laughs> I overcommitted and I, I booked like two hour blocks with all my family members over one weekend. And it was like, I was just jumping between between houses and at the end of that process I've never experienced anything like this before but I had no emotion left I I, I had completely used all my emotion over the weekend and I was like oh my gosh I feel nothing there's like somebody could just walk up and and you know um, punch me in the face and I would have no emotional reaction um 
it was it was something I did not expect um, to happen. But so many people in the family, and you know what? Not everyone's used in the documentary, but like when something like a, a giant thing like this happens in family, um, I think all the emotions get displaced into other family members and people harbor it in different ways, like, you know, different levels of responsibility. But but in this scenario, like, there was no coming together. There was no, like, how do we kind of come together to, like, recognize what we're all feeling here? It was just everyone was in isolation. And, um, you know, that, like you said, like, did I, yeah, there's moments where I'm literally knocking on doors, like, with, um, Joyce's adoptive family, we're on the road trip and knock on the door, go in, Sam waits in the car, plop the camera down on the tripod, record, talk. No setting up shot. I'm lucky I have anything from it. That's uh, extraordinary. I was gonna- <laughs> They didn't gonna... know you were coming, right, Reed? Really? They didn't know or did they? No, they were surprised to see me <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm on my way. I'm, uh, I'm passing through, you know, was pretty much, and then, you know, like, you know, we were able to. They didn't know you were doing a film. Well, I let them know that I was doing a, doing a film looking, looking for Joyce, but I was protective of Sam who didn't want to come in. So I didn't want to let them know that we were on a road trip looking for her. So you just, so the, what was the official cover story here? We're just passing through and I happen <laughs> to have this camera and this tripod. I'm doing, I'm. I am doing a, a documentary uh, where we're trying to uh, find this. I'm wondering and if nobody had any anything about like, well, do we have to be filming this? At some point, yeah, like there was the guy, we won't name any names, who took Joyce to the train station. Um, very uncomfortable being filmed, but I did talk to him. And, um, you know, these are... Why is he um, not in the film? It was it was a lousy interview. Terrible audio. Terrible um, audio, yeah. We didn't need it. <laughs> we didn't yeah. need it. And, you know, there's... Yeah, there's just elements where it was like... You know, how much dirty laundry do you need to tell the story, you know? Mm. I think also in the edit, we, you know, we had a limitation with the length being under 86 minutes. And so we, and we wanted to get on the road trip. That was something we kept struggling with because you could tell the mystery part of it for a long time with all the different family members and all their reactions. But really like once you get on the road trip, the movie steps into gear and we were worked really hard. We worked way harder on the first third of the movie than the other two thirds, we worked really hard on it all, but it was really hard to figure out that flow. And and yeah. part of the sacrifice was we had to lose some characters because it was just too many people um, to be able to like have people track who everyone is and and just to get on the road to finding Joyce. So the 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 uh, those interviews. So the vast majority of those interviews with people who are close to this were done over the span of two days. When we're, yeah, leading up to the um, the road trip, you know, when I'm gathering information as to where she might be, um, it was like one really heavy weekend um, where it's like my aunt Cindy and my grandma and and my and my dad and I kept I kept going. We had a really narrow window before this road trip. Like Sam was committed. Basically, when we bring up the idea of the blue, how about the Blue Panther binds his mom? He's like, you know, yeah, let's do that at my midwinter break, which is in two months from this time. So I had to, um, I was scrambling to find any clues as to where Joyce could be um, that whole time up leading up to this February date. Wow. Wow. So you don't have the information. You know, really, you, you're, you're just, we have no idea where we're of, going. You, you've scheduled the shoot. You're kind of hoping that everything's going to work out, which is how most shoots go. But, oh, yeah, I but guess in so. this case, it was, it was very, it was more than a shoot. Yeah. 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 It, it's also amazing to me how forthcoming everyone seemed to be. 
Mm. Uh, nobody seemed uh, nobody seemed terribly rehearsed. Nobody was kind of Hollywood or anything like that. Uh, yeah. But everybody was very direct and eloquent, and and I thought I didn't feel was anybody really tight lipped out of all the people that you interviewed, except for I guess Joyce's mother. But even she opens up a bit later. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I I felt like people were, you know, I'm a I'm a very curious person, and I you know I just I I, I kind of. You know, one of the things that, you know, it, people have been critical about the movie uh, about is this tone of like, I'm bringing a lot of uh, compassion and curiosity and I'm not bringing um, anger into the story. But that also allowed me to open more doors, I think, because um, I wasn't being standoffish. I wasn't pushing anybody too far. I pushed Sam too far. I pushed Jason too far. <laughs> but like... But, you know, like these are things that that we've also reckoned with, um, you know, Sam and I had to create a, a a pact around like. We have to hang out at least as much without any camera or talk of filming um, as we do filming as as it ramped up to the end of production. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, people I, were really giving and I'm really appreciative of that. I think that like a lot of honesty comes from like Reed being a family member and he was pretty much a one man crew for this whole time. And so there's an intimacy to the interviews, I think, that came as just family member to family member, as opposed to like, hey, I got my four person crew even with the sound guy and the the grip. There was there wasn't really that at all. And so it, it, I think that some of the honesty and intimacy came just from Reed being the one man show behind the camera and just being a family member. Yeah, I'd, I'd mentioned that I, I opted out of all the family interviews too. So I only saw when the film was finally made in May, I, I finally saw my family speaking about all of that. And I had no idea. I'd never seen any of them. Um, I will say also that that Reed, Reed with, behind a camera is kind of a different beast too. <laughs> he, he can kind of yeah, I don't think he pushes people too hard. I mean, yeah, sometimes I was pushed a little bit, but yeah, but I think he he can ask some very deep questions without. Yeah, that is true. I am really different. he yeah. <laughs> hmm. uh, I think he can get down to it, and and I think he uses like the camera to ask some some pretty pretty deep questions and get the answers hmm. he wants out of it. And yeah, it's interesting sometimes, and, and you know without a lot of giving back in it too. Like, it's not like he's there to like converse. He's there for you to answer these questions. Um, and it's interesting, but yeah. That's a good way to put it, Sam. I mean, and I, I do, it, I think that's really interesting about the the one way aspect of making a documentary where, I mean, I'm pulling stuff out of you and that, you know, with a, with an objective to, to, to kind of find answers that I have, but it's it's also like, I don't think that you would ju just like go to those places. Like you wouldn't just start like asking me questions about my relationships unless you were doing a story about it or something like, like or you had a, we had a joint connection, you know, it was like, well, what's going on with Jared or, or Peter or something, you know, then, then maybe it would be, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, I agree. I will say that like watching the raw footage though, you know, Reed going through different things in his life, there was some conversation back and forth that related back to what was going on in Reed's life, but that wasn't really relevant to the movie that we were making in terms of in the edit. So another thing that was kind of interesting about this part of the conversation is like, people have come up to us and told us like, wow, it's like men talking to each other about their emotions. You don't see that very often. And me as an editor, I, until I heard that feedback from audiences, didn't really realize that was what was happening. It was, to me, it was like documentary filmmaker interviewing subject. But then I started thinking about like, especially 20, from 2015 on the adult conversations. And it really was like brothers talking, even though it was more Reed asking and more Sam answering, there was like a back and forth, like, heartfelt like communication it made me rethink how i was thinking about the interviews that were being shot which is kind of interesting jason if you could do a ballpark estimate of how many hours of material you had what what would that number be oh it's no? i mean we we've never strung it all out but you know there's different phases so there's at least 
there's probably, you know, 50 or 100 hours of VHS footage. There's, how, you know, some amount of miles of Super 8 film, uh, you know, like, but the timelines of just Super 8 film alone was like 20 hours or something, you know, which is a crazy amount of film. But, you and know, the hundred- DVD and HD, there's hundreds and hundreds of hours. I mean, mm-hmm. probably when all is said and done, it, we maybe up to a thousand, maybe it's a little bit less than that, you know, but there's definitely hundreds of hours of mini DV footage and, and hundreds of hours of HD footage from 2015 to present. And, you know, I think the hardest part though, like I mentioned earlier is the super eight footage. Cause there's like, honestly, there's just so much gold in that 20 hour timeline. And we used a ton of it, but we used maybe 10 or 15 minutes of it. And we could have easily used three or four hours of it, <laughs> you know, if, if this right. was a, a docu-series or something, but um but yeah, I mean, someday we should probably string it all out and know the definitive answer to this. But it was an overwhelming amount of footage. And it took years just to even kind of get wrap our head around everything we had. And the other challenging part is shot over so many years. And there was just so many different elements, different scenes, so many scenes we edited that never made the movie. You know, and I was so meticulous. I like literally wanted to edit everything to see if it had a place or not and try it out and then we're like you, you spend like all day editing a scene it's like nope that doesn't have a spot okay nice dvd extra feature or something like that but i want to just do a quick call out to darren lend our other editor yes. um uh both darren and jason and i along with our um our two co-producers adam brown and heather hawksford it was i don't know if you ever like you know been in a family gathering and somebody has like a giant you know thousand piece jigsaw puzzle out and people might start gathering around and doing it so the the uh how many five of us were we're doing this and it was like i don't know this is like what i, I can't think of the volume like okay we, so we just thousands of hours okay this it would just be like a whole city block but it's the same size jigsaw puzzles and we just go and we just be like working at it and finding where the pieces connect and it really felt to me like until the very end edits like we hadn't placed those final pieces it was it was just like doing the biggest jigsaw puzzle ever at times it was relaxing at times it was very stressful i wanted to talk about joyce a little bit um i was i had no knowledge of this movie i i try to make a point of not reading the synopsis of a movie before i start watching it i just think it's more interesting that way if you kind of just let the thing be whatever it is and so at first I thought oh my god she's been murdered that was my first thought it's going to be one of those movies about you know the mom was brutally murdered and then it turns out she wasn't she just left and it made me think of uh the Fablemans the Steven Spielberg movie the Fablemans which came out not so long ago it's very interesting like the synchronicity between these two movies and also the fact that that movie you know, obviously, multi-million dollar Hollywood, you know, big name cast, Steven Spielberg. But one thing that they these projects have in common is, and you kind of alluded to this earlier, uh, it doesn't seem really harshly judgmental of the mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I I also feel like you, I, I was stunned by how the fact that she talked to you at all, not, but also that she came back again and again it seems to talk and she seemed to be maybe i don't know like what was her what was her motivation what could she possibly have stood to benefit from even talking on camera about this like a lot of parents would have just said hey it was complicated i feel bad about what it did to you i had my own reasons for doing it and no i don't want to be in your documentary a lot of people would have said that and she didn't Mm -hmm why i mean what do you why this is a good question try to stay away from speculation but let's see um why would she i mean i just want to first call out also like pretty much all of us pretty much all people come from a mom and um we you know whether or not your mom was present in your life or present in the way that you wanted her to be or connected in the way you wanted her to be that's still an original connection point to people and the world and so ooh, it's just you know we're heading into mother's day you know and i just want to say like man moms are so valuable um 
regarding choice and why she participated in a movie um i think she had two minds about it the whole time i think that you know before she left our family out of the blue um the last time i saw her as i remember was picking up sam to go do one of our little film shoots on super 8 and she saw me with the camera in my hand and she saw Sam running off, you know, with maybe some props or costume or something. And I remember the exchange being like very positive, very happy, very like, um, very much like she appreciated that I was taking Sam out to do these film projects. She's a very creative person. Um, and I think that uh, she loved that we would do this. But once I start asking these hard questions, um, well, if, okay, let's fast forward now. We find her, spoiler alert, and <laughs> we, when we find her, Sam's on the phone, you know, um, having this amazing, there's an amazing scene where he makes this first phone call. Extraordinary. It's amazing. I can't even believe that I have the film of it. The way it's recorded is just blows my mind. Okay. And then right after that, he hand he's like, she wants to talk to you. I don't have a recording of this, but what she says to me is roughly, thank you. This was a huge problem for me and I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I don't know if it was that piece or if it was other pieces that drew her into wanting to participate this sort of give and take or exchange that like okay I had helped her out with a big problem and that she didn't know how to resurface um on her own and you know um at one point she totally dropped out didn't want to participate there was an article in a local newspaper and she heard about it and she said make this go away um didn't want to participate in what the film project yeah yeah she stopped wanting to participate this years, was back in, years in. in in 2005 kind of after what i mentioned the sam show where they showed all the films i believe yeah and so dropped it um took a huge break didn't didn't film her or really so anyone. You, had done, you had done an interview with her oh yeah i done i had done like all the inner like you see her in the coffee shop with Sam and you see her on the couch and she's talking about going through a portal and that kind of thing like that's we had done that filming I had even done some filming um actually I shot some on 16 and the camera jammed and all we had was the audio um and that was like 2004 maybe um but but we 2005 there was a there was an article published and it freaked her out and she's like make this go away and you know of course you can't make an article go away but um gave her a lot of space didn't do any filming respected like you know like that she needed a break from it um and then years later I um I re reintroduced the idea of of finishing the project with her um and i tell her something like hey this is um this is a project that i'm really passionate about um and i want to finish this story would you be willing to participate and she said you know this this storyline makes me uncomfortable but as an artist i think you should do it um she said that this is yeah this is a difficult um ethical place you know we for for documentarians and anyone you know making a film about a difficult subject especially within family um but i leaned into you know, like my heart felt like doing it was what i needed to do i felt like i i kind of felt i don't know i, I can't really describe this feeling but it was just like i felt like this was something that was kind of either either I was going to lean in and do this or or do I couldn't move past this work. I had to make it 
Like I had to make the work. I don't, I don't know how, another way to describe it. I mean, I could have made it and just shelved it for, for many years, but, but the, but the point is like, um, it's mixed, you know, with Joyce and she, um, has opted out of watching it. Um, she hasn't she, seen it. Yeah. She's basically communicated that, um, at first she says she wasn't ready. And then she was more definitive and said, I don't think I'll ever be ready to watch it. So that's hard, but it's, it's also like, you know, it's, it's not, um, out of the ordinary for, you know, how she's, you know, been with other things. How long was Joyce in your life, Reed? Like, when, how old were you when you? Hmm. Met? I think that she and my dad, Randy, got together when I was about five years old. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, we were, <clears throat> we were, I was there half time or, or part time because I was there in the summers and at Christmas vacation. And I was going to school with, with, uh, in, in Bay Area with, with my mom. So, um, yeah, that sort of is another reason, you know, people look at the story and they're like, you know, how did these things, how did, how was Reed able to, um, play this role? And I think because I came from a blended family environment where I was going between houses, I could observe differences in the family dynamics and kind of that sparked my curiosity. You, you, you have as a filmmaker, a very it's empathetic it's warm but it's detached and Mm -hmm. uh i wonder if um i wonder if you're i i you know but but here i'm sitting here talking to you and there's a tremendous amount of emotion Mm. there's a tremendous amount of emotion and this is not a detached sort of Feeling. And this is how this is how I am in interviews. It's sort of it's interesting, you know, like I'm I think it was like the whole time it's like I don't want to burn bridges. I don't want to push anybody to you know like you know just to to leave the room or leave the interview or to you know do anything. Like I'm just like um I'm offering an opportunity for people to share their story and what's going on. Um, meanwhile, I, like you said, I'm a tremendously sensitive and emotional person. And, um, you know, you can see that in that, that scene where I'm on camera. Yeah. And Sam, I, you know, I guess kind of the same question for you. I mean, it's, I was worried about you as I was watching the movie. I was worried about you and I was worried about Reed. You know, and and thinking like, do they know what they're getting into here? I mean, a lot of times adult artists with decades of experience don't know what they're getting themselves into emotional when they decide to do something like this. Like whether you're making a drama about your life or you're te- or you're writing a memoir about your life or you're just, you know, making a Facebook post about something that happened, like you you feel so exposed and all of that and just... You yeah. Know. Yeah, totally. I we do after a lot of screenings, we we get a lot of comments about just like courage and that's that's always hard to hear. Um I don't identify with a lot of what we did as being very courageous so much as like um kind of like stupid, like you know, kind of came out of like we're we're, we're too young and dumb to to understand what's actually going on. So I actually of, had the thought that if you were even a few years older, this movie never would have happened. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think I, if I would, I think about like t- talking to my younger self and like, if I would have advised my younger self to say yes to this project, um, I think I'd still, you know, very much say like this, it it's could be very much worth your while, but I want you to know you're not as emotionally, um, prepared or developed as you might think you are. Um, and just to, I think, lay out a little bit more of like, you know, uh, your emotional intelligence isn't where, you know, it might need to be um, to, to fully grasp this for a long, long time. Uh, yeah. Do you feel about, how do you feel about Joyce's 
explanations of of why she did what she did with some distance with some hindsight and like looking at the just the the totality of the film of this experience like how do you feel about that yeah it's it's tough for me personally um you know there's a big the major theme of the film i think is hurt people hurt people it's like mm. cyclical it's um yeah and, and i think I've come to accept that I don't have to, you know, fully forgive my mom. And that's, I can still have a relationship with her without, you know, she, and <laughs> to be honest, she hasn't fully given like a, a, a full on apology either to, to me. Um, and, but I, I also have to accept that she came from a lot of pain and hardship too. Um, and this is all the, this, that, all of that together that I just talked about is the complicated relationship I still have with her. Um, people ask about closure and uh, I don't think that's really the goal is for closure. I think I want a relationship with my mom. She wants one with me and we're gonna have to still deal with a lot of messiness um, for probably a long time. And it might be the best I get with her and, and that's kind of okay. Um, just to, just for everybody who's, watching this we're going to go a few minutes over i've been told that it's okay to do that so you know we'll, maybe maybe another 10 or 15 minutes uh, uh i think if everybody's okay with it because i'm i i i i really do feel like it's a very it's the movie's so fair to everybody and i think you know i don't know anybody who has had any negative things to say about the movie as a movie but a lot of people are very judgmental of Joy's, um, with good reason. I understand why they would have a negative view of her, but I also know that you know, they're my own experience and my own family. I know that there are some people who maybe maybe became parents who probably shouldn't have been parents, and they did the best they could, and and sometimes they can't keep it going. They can't keep it going, and it's very hard to accept. And it's like, well. They should have, you know, maybe they should never have ki have had kids in the first place. But then none of you would exist, and you know, it's a conundrum. And I and I think the movie respects that too. It's like it's some it's there's some very big questions that are being considered here. I, I think that in the edit of the movie, there's so many different ways in any documentary that's dealing with 25 years of footage, and that you can tell the story. And I think that we all, our whole team tried to honor the people that were in the movie and, and represent them for who they were and try to not, would have been a lot, would have been really easy to paint Joyce as a bigger villain, you know, or as a villain at all. And we wanted to show the human Joyce and, you know, and we wanted people to identify with her, even if they don't understand her actions. And I do know in showing this for people, like some people, it's not forgivable what she did, but other people like, understand where she was coming from or understand the feelings whether it's from the intergenerational trauma they experienced but but i think that we just tried to be fair to everybody and i think i don't know if you had yeah to say sure. that, but a lot of care is why the edit took three years or even like seven years if you count all the kind of prep work on the edit you know it just it took so long and and you'd show it for people and be like oh I really hate Joyce and you change some things. It's like, oh, I really understand her. And we tried to just strike that balance. I think understanding is really helpful. You know, we're talking about, you know, the word should and like, you know, what 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 should anyone be in a situation? Sam brought up, you know, maybe I should have had more emotional competence. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Joyce should have been any number of different ways as a parent. Um, Gosh, you know, we, we're all dealt these different hands. We're all dealt um, really different experiences. <laughs> um, it's, it's. Uh, I think, you know, one of the things we've noticed with audiences is that, like, it resonates. This movie resonates with a lot of people. A lot of people have childhood trauma. Maybe most of us have childhood trauma. Um, and then there's like a lot of us have skeletons in the closet within our families and stuff that doesn't get talked about and lots of levels of avoidance 
And all those things are really tied to this sort of like, you know, what, what should a family do? What should a person do? How should a mom act? Like we can talk all day about how a mom should be. I mean, dads leave families like, it's like, it's like normal. It's like normal to hear a story of a dad that is left. But when a mom does, it's like, oh, that's forbidden. That's forbidden. Yeah. They're going to hell. Um, I think I think that uh, in this scenario, like I had to wrestle with the question, you know, how could Joyce do this? Uh, I present my mother, Chayo, in the story. She's a very nurturing, connected, kind of always there for me type mom. It's very strange for me to see my stepmother vanish as somebody that I felt like was present and connected to Sam and Jared and even me. Um, so how does that happen? You know, and what what I try to do in the movie is peel it back to understand. That's really, you know, like, ah, the more we live with these sort of like judgments and shoulds and, you know, the, that everybody should fit into some kind of mold, I think the the less accepting we can be. It would have been very easy to punish her. I think that also, you know, um, the movie does a great job of, of going deep into understanding my mom's own past and trauma. Um, but it also is messaging, even with that understanding, that understanding doesn't equal accountability, right? Like, it doesn't mean that just because we, we've come to understand this, it's given her complete accountability. Like, that's not the case. She still caused harm, and she still needs to be accountable to it. Um, right. Yeah, I think I think the movie balances that really well. What's what is the what is the how does it feel letting this story about, go oh, out okay. into the world? It's not yours anymore. Now that it's out there, like it's its own thing. It's really, you know, there has been a lot of thought about kind of filmmaking and consent to your own story and it being shared and you know I, I want to believe there's a world where you can revoke your consent at any time but that's pretty much gone now for me <laughs> like I can't just pull that back at any time um and but I I, I appreciate the way the story um uh portrays myself and my it, it, it's it's such a weird like small sliver of an identity of me that you know you think that a documentary is made about you and it's like this full-on like looking into a mirror like I gotta like own up to all of this and it's like actually no it's a tiny 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 piece of that mirror and that's it and that's all people get to see um you know I don't and again I don't identify straightforward as like the the boy whose mom was abandoned and had to go find him that's not how I greet people or talk to people um I identify as a frisbee player actually or a social worker and like you know that's a lot of that's not in the film and um it's interesting though to like just have it out there it's it's out now <laughs> did well i'm talking about that on the on the edit you know it's like i only had and darren and i only had what reed had shot so these times where reed was like oh my god i had the most amazing conversation with sam and he told me about the stuff about social work it's like oh i wasn't I didn't record any of that. So it's like, we only had what we had to work with to be able to present Sam in the most honest, truthful light that we could, but that still is a small portion of, we have so much more ultimate Frisbee footage of Sam than, than <laughs> makes the cut of the movie. It's just, we had this like, uh, you know, section that had the, forget which classical music it was, but from the Raging Bull where they do the montage where yeah. he's showing Ray, uh, going through time and we had a version of that it was like Sam's ultimate career that was really cool but it was like <laughs> where does this have a place in the movie you know that was in the two and a half hour cut not necessarily the hour I think we should give cut. Sam the project uh, file and let so. him cut, cut his own movie where he like you know does you know he's like this frisbee career <laughs> just be a highlight reel of my own highlight plays <laughs> So Reed, how do you feel? How do you feel about this? About this, you know, the the bird leaves the nest at some point. You know, oh, this movie. It's, uh, like, and people are going to have interpretations of this movie that you can't control. You don't have. Yeah. You're not even going to know they had them. Yeah. You know. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, on one hand, it's like, a, it's like taking off a really heavy backpack because um, like Sam said, we've, you know, I collected all of these stories and I didn't share them until a year ago. Um, you know, it was something for that I held on to and I kind of protected because there's um, out of context, some of this material could be extra hurtful or make people feel certain ways. And I wanted to present it all in a way that was clear and that, you know, told many sides of the story. That was important to me to present to that to my family. Um, and I feel I feel like I've taken off a big load um, by by presenting it. And then also um, it's been remarkably cool to do Q and A's with Sam, to do Q and A's with Jared and our dad and our other family members. And you see a real time um, a new awareness happening. Like I feel like in Q and A's, Sam and I have had conversations that like we've never had before. Um, and it's just, it's just brought out like really interesting things where somebody notices something and then we talk about it, you know? Um, and, and then also, you know, and it's like, there's a limit to that. I don't invite that forever. Um, we, we did our theatrical run and, you know, that's over. Um, but, but, you know, also with Jared and my dad, you see elements of where, <clears throat> like my dad's watched the movie six times in a theater. And I think on his like six watch, he's, still making realizations i really appreciate you all participating in this and it is an extraordinary film and and one that i've been recommending to people uh pretty much constantly since i saw it and and i'm really glad that we had a chance to do this we really yeah, appreciate you so your much. support and kind words about the film and if you haven't checked out matt's review of the film check it out at rogerieward.com it's really you really uh, nailed it we, we all felt like we all cried Oh, that's great. Well, you got me first, so it was only fair. Before I did the Zoom call, this morning I was at my late mother's house cleaning it out. She died in uh, April of 2021. Hmm. And I had a very difficult relationship with my mother, and including an abandonment of a period of about five years. Hmm. Oh, yeah. My. Yeah. So, you know, that, that, that'll answer your question of why did this guy get so much out of this movie? Because I was like, oh, mm. all right, I get it. All right. Well, I... Thank you. Um, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, y'all. Thanks.